What is up, everybody? Welcome to the Fiends Podcast, episode number four. I'm Larry. This is Nick, and we are one half of the band Fiends. Jesus Christ! <laughs> Jesus Christ! I love you, God. I love you. If you want to support the podcast, make sure to follow us on social media. That's facebook.com slash the Fiends Podcast, Instagram at the Fiends Podcast, and our YouTube page, youtube.com slash Fiends Texas. If you want to check out our band, you can go back to the archives, listen to episode three. We debuted an unreleased Fiends track on that episode. That's going to be exclusive. The only place you're going to hear uh, that song. So make sure to go ahead and check it out and let us know what you think in the comment section. We're going to be dropping a new episode every single Friday and also the occasional bonus show. Last week, we did a bonus show on the Deftones 20-year anniversary of White Pony album. We also did a album review of their latest release, Ohm. So go ahead and check that out. If there's something that you want to hear us talk about, rant about, uh, make sure to let us know. We're open to you know, all suggestions. Uh, Nick, I'm pretty proud of us because we've been able to keep this going, you know, like with no signs of slowing down. Like we've yeah, done man. pretty good. Yeah, yeah, it's going well. I'm I'm really having a lot of fun with it. It gets gives me a reason to get out of the house for a little bit, so that's cool. Um, I'm excited, man. Yeah, like we actually had our whole month like planned out, and well, I don't want to spoil it for the listeners, but we have yeah, we have like even like the next coming month. Like, pretty much all planned out. Yeah, we're going to be so, doing this well into the new year. Yeah. We got our shit together, man. Hopefully there's no COVID-20. Oh, man, don't even say that. Cut that out. Oh, damn. <laughs> you just ruined it, man. <laughs> it's true, though. Like, that could... Everything could be the yeah, same. No, just cut that out. Cut out the whole thing. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I'll cut it out. Yeah. Um, If you listen to last week's episode... We we had a pretty big coup. We had a pretty good, uh, pretty big uh, surprise appearance from big time Hollywood celebrity actor, mm -hmm. star of uh, such films as uh, Gone in sixty seconds, uh, The Sorcerer's Apprentice, and my all time favorite Ghost Rider Two: Spirit of Vengeance. Shit, man! Mister Nicholas Cage was on the podcast he last was here, week. Bro. I'm a prickly pear. <laughs> man. You almost sound just like him. It almost sounds like maybe I was Nicolas Cage, but now nah, he actually No, he was out. actually he here. Was here, bro. He was I saw him my own eyes. He was in and out. And we we have it recorded. He was here. It's it's documented. It, it just like man, like that's pretty big, you know, our first few episodes and we get a big time celebrity like that. It just like begs the question like imagine like who else will get on the podcast in the weeks coming in. Oh shit, who's that? Oh, Somebody's at the door. I will, I will get it. Yeah, you should probably get that. Oh man, <laughs> welcome to the podcast. You know him as the lead singer of the band Corn, ladies and gentlemen. Scatting John Davis. <laughs> Scatting John Davis is here. Nick, is there is there anything that you want to ask him? Yeah, man. So I've always wanted to know what is the craziest thing that's gone on like on the tour bus. <laughs> Oh, that's all right. What the fuck? <laughs> that's this is a family show, man. Oh. Dude, that's fucked up, bro. Ah. Oh. Oh. You're a sick fuck, bro. Get oh, out of here, dude. But I did love issues. That was a good album. Oh man, dude. Like, we're trying to be professional here, and you, you think you know somebody, man. We're trying to we're trying to be a professional show, and then you got people coming on here thinking that they can say whatever they want and just take it advantage of our generosity and just, I don't know, man. It's disgusting, man. You think he'll sign our CDs? I mean, he might if we ask him. Well, we better go catch him before he leaves. Maybe he'll come on next week. Yeah, he'll be back. Ugh, I don't know. This is just disgusting, but y you know what? I need a minute to compose myself. We're actually going to hear from this week's sponsor. Yes, we have sponsors on the podcast. so We've made it. We've, we've officially made it. So we're going to pay some bills. And after that, we'll be back with more of The Fiends Podcast. Hi. Do you suffer from male pattern baldness? Do you ridicule other people's music tastes? 
do you post negative YouTube comments to distract you from the crippling void that is your life? Then do we have the solution for you? Introducing the all new patented method designed by Fiends Laboratories. It's called Shut the Fuck Up! Engineered by the top scientists in the world, Shut the Fuck Up has been proven to improve the lives of cynical men everywhere. My girlfriend dumped me. My friends never wanted to talk to me. Even my own parents hated being around me. But now, I shut the fuck up and my life has changed drastically. 9 out of 10 doctors recommend shut the fuck up for the elitist troll in your life. We're back on the podcast and this week we thought we'd change it up and Nick actually brought me the idea of doing like a book review book club maybe like once a month and I thought that was an interesting thing to do because my when I think of my taste in books it's going to be different than Nick's and um, that'll be something cool so uh, I'll go ahead and start and the the book I chose uh, today is a book from detective Joe Kenda he's you know him from the show Homicide Hunter it's on discovery one of those discovery show or id shows one of those crime uh type shows and his book is called i will find you and it's an autobiography of sorts right and it covers his career as a homicide uh detective and this guy he he was on the job for like 23 years and one of the most notable things about him is that uh, his claim to fame is that he had like a 93% um, like success rate as far as like cases close. Mm-hmm. And I don't know how many um, cases he actually had, but it's been, you know, so many years. And he's kind of uh, famous because he's got this like deadpan, dry sense of humor. I don't know if you've ever seen this show. No, I've never heard of it. Uh, one of the first times that I actually heard of uh, him in particular, I think I heard him on like the Nerdist podcast with Chris Hardwick like years ago, and he told a story about like the things that uh, keep him up at night. Like he had like PTSD and like these reoccurring nightmares. And the story that he told on the podcast, which is actually in the book, is a story about he got a call to a crime scene and he walks in and it's like a trailer park and Uh they tell him they have three bodies um deceased and he goes in and he finds uh it would be a woman and she has a gunshot wound to the head and he goes and finds a second body which is a male which would have been the husband and um he was the the assailant he had the gun and he had like a suicide note, you know, saying that he can't go on anymore in some religious text or whatever. And so he's kind of dumbfounded. He's like, you said that there was three. I said, down the hall. And he goes down the hall, ends up being a five-year-old little boy. And the boy has a gunshot wound to the face and he's got one eye drooping out and the reason it's a recurring nightmare is because he the little boy is wearing like the same pajamas as uh detective son so that left a lasting like impression on him is something that still haunts him and in his nightmare he wakes up and it's the little boy and he's on like a bunk bed or he's he wakes him up and he tells detective um why did you let my daddy hurt me? And he's got the eye drooping out. And I heard that story and like, first of all, it's like chilling, right? Yeah. And it's gruesome, but like that, that stuck with me. But like the way he tells these stories is very, he has like a very like deadpan, dry, like voice, but he's a very great storyteller. So it, urged me to pick up the book and i would recommend anybody who wants to check it out like don't 
I have the hardcover, but you're better off checking out the audiobook because it's better hearing it from him and from his own voice and he narrates his you know the book and uh it, one of the first stories he shares in that book is his like first year on the job you know he's in his early 20s and they get a call to a crime scene at a funeral home and they get to inside the funeral home and a fight has broke out at the funeral home so like it's it's crazy everybody's fighting and he sees the casket and there's two people in the casket the deceased and a guy on top of him punching him in the <laughs> face <laughs> I, I oh, that's terrible we shouldn't laugh at that but just like the just like it's so like it's like the oddest thing to see you come to your crime scene it's a funeral like it's the last place you would expect there to be a fight in and, and he just punched him in the face and again like his eyes like drooping out it's just like this crazy thing and that's how he starts off the book and i don't want to give away too much um there's a bunch of like uh interesting stories in that book and it's definitely worth checking out but like as i said if you do check out the audiobook also check out the show like it's very entertaining to to they do some reenactments of the show or whatever but uh, just listening to him tell these stories. Uh, very, very uh, entertaining guy. Uh, Nick, what about you? Well, mine is not like that at all. <laughs> <laughs> I told you, we got different tastes. Fuck, man. Like, I, don't think, I don't think I don't Well, I mean, you told me the story. I don't think I could read the book, to be honest. No, actually, it sounds more gruesome than it actually is. Like, him telling these stories kind of makes it... He, he does it aged, almost in a comforting easier way. easier to digest. Yeah, it's almost comforting. Like he <clears throat> he kind of takes away like the the almost the depravity of it, but he doesn't like joke about it. It's still very serious, yeah. but it's he he kind of eases you into it. Sure. Um, as far as like the book, you know, I I really got into books maybe the last year or so. I really haven't been much of a reader, but um, one book that I do recommend to just about everybody because this book just you know did. It's kind of a cliche to say this, but this book really did change my life to some degree. Um, and that book is uh, Can't Hurt Me by David Goggins. This is actually a book you've been telling me about like, yeah. for the last year. I, My dad had got the audio book, and he called me one day, and he's like, you need to read this book. It's going to change your life. And in my head, I'm like, yeah, whatever. You're full of shit. Like, you know, and I, I was just like in a really weird spot at that point in time when, you know, I finally just gave in and started listening to that book, but I'm glad I listened to started because I got the audio book and I recommend the same thing. Um, if you do find whatever I'm about to say interesting, I recommend listening to the audio book because it's not narrated by David Goggins. It's narrated by someone, I think his name was Adam Skolnick, but in between every chapter, it's like a little mini podcast. So the narrator and David Goggins have like a little mini podcast and talk about each chapter. So, so for the people listening that maybe are not aware of him, like what is his background? So, um, this guy is, um, he's a former Navy SEAL. He was in the military. Um, he was in the Air Force I think, before he became a Navy SEAL. He went to Ranger School. He was an ultra marathon, or he still is an ultra marathon runner. Um, he held the record for the most pull-ups in 24 <laughs> hours at one point in time. And um, he's just he's just a fucking badass, for lack of a better term, man. And but you know when you hear his story about where he came from, as far as his childhood, he he had a really fucked up childhood, and um, he he pretty much admits it. I don't want to give too much away because I think it's so worth going to listen. But you know he basically got dug himself into a hole, was like over three hundred pounds, and just hated his life and was full of shit. And he hated his job. And, you know, he had been in the military, in the Air Force beforehand. And then he was, you know, became a pretty much like a pest control person. Um, and then he just like, what the fuck am I doing with my life? You know, I'm, I'm not doing shit. I'm a fucking loser. Like, he pretty much looked at himself in the mirror and told him that he's, he's a fucking loser. And so he, um, he ended up just kind of changing himself. He went to go to become a Navy SEAL. And so he had to lose like 
uh, I forgot how much weight, but he had to lose like over a hundred pounds in like less than three months, and he did it. And um, he went to he went to Navy he went to uh, uh, Book Navy Seal he went to Buds, and um, he had to go through it three times, not because he couldn't handle it or anything, but because of health reasons every single time. So he had to go through hell week three times. Wow. <laughs> and um, it's just some of the things that this guy has done. Once you read this or listen to this book or read the book, you're like, what the fuck? This guy is like wired differently. Now, is this an autobiography or is this more like a self-help book? It's a little bit of both. Um, you know, and the cool thing is he tells you his stories and then he tells you what, you know, you learn from it. And there's challenges in each, you know, in each section. And it, it's just it made me really kind of really think about holding myself accountable for my own problems and my own actions. And if I'm not happy with something, well then I better fucking fix it. And I need to be real with myself. And it got to the point where I, I, I really listened to what this guy was telling me. And I was like working out at four thirty every morning at that time. This now, was, this was pre COVID. Now let, let me stop you. I, I sure. Sure. To. Sure. Now, before you're reading this, do you feel like you weren't holding yourself accountable? You feel like you, no didn't have that discipline no i didn't i um i kind of fell into a funk and i just was really unhappy with a lot of things and i just had no self-discipline to do the things that i know i needed to do to be a better person and i just kind of had this all woe is me mentality oh i i i know those i yeah. I, i've seen nick many a times in those <laughs> in those funks and I'm sure that we'll we'll tell the story. Yeah, so they'll, they'll come up. But I mean, it got to the point where like I was hearing that guy in my sleep like telling me like like my alarm would go off sometimes in the morning and I didn't want to go to the gym, and I would just hear him get up, bitch. <laughs> you know, for real, I would hear I would hear this fucking guy's voice in my head. I'm like, get up, you fucking bitch. I'm like, oh shit. So I get up and I go to the gym, and um, every once in a while I kind of fall off the wagon, but then I remember like, hey, that guy is out there. You know, and, and that guy, at one point in time, he got me to be pretty damn confident in myself. So, um, I, I recently told you this is, you know, um, I started running again in back in June. And mm -hmm. I've always like, I've always like gone through these little periods where I'll run or maybe mm -hmm. I'll start dieting and I'll lose some weight or I'll feel pretty like healthy and maybe last like a couple of months and then I fall off the wagon because I wasn't really committed in the first place. Yeah. It's like, it's like they say like, you know, diets don't work or especially fad diets don't work because that's what it is. It's a fad diet. Like it has to be like, you have to change like your, your whole, uh, like lifestyle if you want to be like successful or like, uh, it's, it's, it's just comes from discipline. Exactly. Like, and, and you know, one thing we were talking about the same conversation you're talking about that reminded me of Goggins it was because um, there was times that I, I kind of wanted to hang out with you or talk to you and you I couldn't reach you because you were just, you know, you were doing your thing. And when I found out that you were, you know, distancing yourself so you could run and do the things you needed to do, it reminded me like, oh, fuck yeah. Like that's exactly where, you know, kind of, yeah. I, I told you to do That's what Goggins kind of says in his book. I, I, and, had a, I had a routine where I yeah. was going like, I was going twice a day and I go in the morning, like seven, eight o'clock. And I was there like in the evening, seven, eight o'clock. And like, it was for the first time in my life, I felt consistent and, you know, I knock on wood, like I've kept it up for, for six months. But one of the reasons, you know, it came up is because I told you that the reason I like running is because there's a certain level of discipline and because every morning i'm going to be out there but i'm also i don't want to take an off day because i feel like if i take an off day then that leads to a second off day and exactly. then a third yeah. and you told me that that's something that he talks about in the book that he he does does those he still does those like marathon runs yeah like he does he doesn't have to but no yeah he feels like he has to yeah and that's exactly right man and so and that's kind of why i am the way i am that's kind of what the way i've been for many years of my life, I just, I feel like I have to do these fucking crazy things. And so I kind of resonate with him in that degree, but not to, not <laughs> as extreme as he is. But, you know, one thing that I liked about with the running thing that you told me that reminded me a lot about him and what he says in his book is like, 
you were like, yeah, I mean, it's just the discipline. You were telling, we were talking about running. You're like, yeah, it's the discipline. I just, I have to do it. But you I don't, don't, don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. I don't want to fucking do it. I don't want to go run, but I have to do it. You, you've actually been working out a lot more lately. Yeah, no, I started lifting weights again. And I guess we'll talk about that a little bit later yeah. too. But I mean, um, I'm just holding myself accountable now. I'm like, I'm not making excuses. If I don't work out in the morning before work, I work out in the evening when I get home. And um, today I knew we were going to record this podcast. So I made sure I worked out yesterday because I knew this, e I knew I was going to get home late this evening. And so today's my rest day. Thank God. But tomorrow I got to hit it. I get it again, man. I, I need to, and it's on my list of things to do. You've been telling me and I'll make sure to uh, set aside some time and check it out because uh, actually I, I, I don't always like, I don't know what it is. Like those self-help type things. I almost feel like, Oh, I get the gist of it and I understand the concept and so I don't always like take the time to like read those books or like listen I, to those speakers. One, but I really need to. Yeah, you know, and like I've always kind of been interested in self help books because like I like to just learn more about how I can improve myself as a person and better myself. Because I'm not thinking about just myself anymore, man. Like I I I gotta be the That's best right. husband I can be and I gotta be the best father I can be. And I don't know how to do all those things yet. I'm still new to both. But if I can learn how to do that from anybody then fuck yeah but i mean once you hear that we'll read this this is like the ultimate book in my opinion because i've read a few of these health self-help books and everybody else i feel is just full of shit mm -hmm. like once you hear some of the things that this guy has done you're like okay what is this you know what does this you know blogger in new york who hasn't done <laughs> any of these extreme things have to tell me that you know goggins hasn't already said I mean, and even if you don't want to listen to like, you know, ways, if you're not interested in like, you know, implementing new things in your life to make you a better person, the cool thing about this book is that the stories are good in themselves and it's kind yeah. of funny at times. Um, but I recommend the audiobook. I, I can't recommend it enough. It, it's it's a book that really changed my life. And I talked to a few other people who, who said the same thing. So I, I just, you know, it's well, a great fucking book. A books like that, like, it doesn't even necessarily pertain to like physical stuff or like you know it can pertain to anything like if you're not happy in one aspect of your life like you need to make those changes you need to get it you need to i feel like this probably applies to a bunch of different areas not yeah. just like getting in shape which he did but it exactly like a, it's like a, it's, like a, it's lifestyle. a mental thing like a mental, i mean yeah it's you know it's it's for people who want to be you know physically strong obviously but it's it's not so much geared toward that it's more so geared towards being mentally strong mentally strong and callousing your mind and that's a quote that he says and i think we need we live in a day and age where people are just so soft mentally that people need to be tough. I mean, it's just the way it is. So that's that's a good pick. Uh, we definitely uh, recommend those two for anybody listening to this. Um, that actually is a good transition into our main topic of conversation today. And that's actually there's two things when we started this podcast that I did not want to talk about or i wanted to at least stay away from and the first being politics mm -hmm. especially this year it's been such a the political climate has been so divisive especially this year more so than in previous years and it just got to the point where i just could not take it and and i've done a lot to distance myself from that and disconnect it i don't watch the news and and uh, I don't think you watch the news either. I stopped. I don't watch it anymore. And, dude, there's people who, like, I I have patients that they complain about, like, the political stuff and they claim to hate it, yet they're watching it, like, every single day. They don't even watch, like, normal television anymore. They're, like, tuned into the news, those 24 news stations. And it's like, if this bothers you so much and you hate it, why do you insist on watching it and it's we're we're addicted to it we're yeah the, at this we're, point we're addicted to tragedy we're addicted to just negativity we're addicted to just the absolute bottom of the barrel bullshit just a circus of it all that we forget how much beauty there is in this world unfortunately and myself i've been you know, we all have kind of been blinded by that we hear about all these fucking just awful things and we forget to think about hey there's a 
there's a little girl who lives in this sta- this town that learned how to ride a bike today. And you'll never hear about that. There, there's there's a, a, a kid who was saved by somebody from a burning building. There's an old couple who has been together for, you know, 70 plus years and they're still happily married. And but- to, to sidetrack real quick is, you know, a lot of people are quick to blame the media and I get it. And there's this like distrust and paranoia that's been bred especially this year when it comes to media and to an extent i agree but also in a way i don't even blame the media it's a people thing like we're we're consuming what we are fed but also like we're part of the problem because we react to the negativity we don't react to the the positive stuff you won't hear those stories because that's not what sells that's not what gets ratings so it's a it's a psychology thing like if we gravitated to that stuff and which we do as humans you know everybody loves a good underdog story everybody loves you know some more positive stuff but like what really sells it's the negative and so it's just this vicious cycle of just we're just consuming what's already been regurgitated and fed back to us and anyway that's politics i did not want to talk about that and there's no need this is all meant and fun but the second thing i was trying to avoid talking about is this pandemic and or just COVID in general and we've touched on it like in the previous episodes and it's really one of those things where it's like how can you not talk about it yeah i mean it's dictated it's changed my life drastically asked most people you know and and it's hard for me just to ignore the fact that it doesn't exist because it's just it it's just changed so much of my lifestyle to the point where i've struggled with my own identity for the last six months and it's fucking it hurts man so there's the obvious um ways in which it's it's affected us as far as being in a band of course you can't play shows or or you shouldn't play shows i I I know there's bands that are playing shows or planning to play in shows now and um I'm not going to take a stance on it but I don't have an opinion on it. I I also feel like this year like I don't feel this strong need that I need to play shows right now because realist I know it's not realistic. So I'm okay with waiting for whenever it's okay to play shows but i'm not like die i need yes of course i miss it i'm sure you miss it yeah i mean we will fuck man like three three months ago i think i texted you guys i was like i really miss playing shows man we we all miss it but at the same time i'm like oh i need to play a show this weekend or next weekend or whatever no i don't have that urge but i mean i do miss it yeah so i i feel for everybody missing concerts and stuff like that but that's the obvious now like how would you say uh covid has affected you in your personal life just this year um you know i will start off by as awful as covid has been when covid hap started back in march the world kind of slowed down a little bit but it actually gave me a chance to be home a little bit more and actually start developing a a relationship with my daughter because i i was working super long hours and i was never home and there were some days i would get home and she would already be asleep and i you know i was just so sad all every day because i have this beautiful little girl who doesn't even really know me And that broke my fucking heart, man. And um, so when I had more time to actually be home with her, I was getting out of work a lot earlier than I had. Um, On the weekends, I had to sit home, stay home with her and play with her. And I mean, it was it was nice for me to be able to do that finally. And now, you know, she loves me to death, which is great. My, you know, and and that's exactly what I wanted. But um, after a while though when it comes to me as a person as as myself my what makes me me a lot of the things that i enjoy doing before covid i would say pretty much all those things i can't really do i mean technically i could do them but do i i don't know that it's safe to do and 
And that's something that I've always talked to you about in mm -hmm. private where just from knowing you is like everybody needs a purpose, right? Yeah. And success is defined differently for everybody. So success might be how much money you make, how big is your house, how many cars you have, or um, I, you know, success is I'm happy I'm married with a family or success is I get to travel the world. It's mm -hmm. different for everybody. Um, but everybody needs a purpose. And for some people, their career is, is their purpose. And I know for you, that's not your purpose, man. Mm -hmm. Like your, your, your job is your job. Like yeah. there's some people where like, that is who they are. That defines them. And, uh, that's not me. And I know for sure that's not you. Yeah, and, for sure. And I've always known you to kind of struggle with that, like of balancing work and personal life, but also like the things that make you happy, you know, like, like you need your person that needs to have his hobbies and like, like, what would you say? Like, what, what are your hobbies like outside of the band, outside of your family? You know, it's funny because I was thinking about that the other day. And when I sit down and think about it, I don't really know. I don't really think that I have a lot of hobbies. But the things that I do enjoy doing, I love and I'm so passionate about that that's what makes me me. Um, probably my number one hobby is, is lifting weights. I've, I've been lifting weights since I was a teenager. And that's somewhere where, you know, going to the gym and lifting weights is somewhere where I'm my own mad scientist. I, um, I'm in charge of my success and my failure in the gym. That accountability you were talking exactly. about. Exactly. And, you know. If you fail, it's because of you. Yeah. If Nobody I have, else. if I have a good workout and I feel fulfilled, it's cause I, I did it. If I go and have a shitty workout and just went through the motions and went home feeling nothing, it's on me. Um, and that's why I've always loved weightlifting cause it's just a time for me to be by myself, you know, lift some heavy shit and then go home. And, um, and I always feel good when I have a good workout. Apart from that, I really enjoy, uh, jujitsu. Uh, I'm still a white belt, but I've been doing it off and on for a few years. And the reason why I've just been kind of off and on with it is just because I've had a job that's just been so demanding of me that, hell, there were times when I couldn't go to class for a whole month just because I was getting out of work late. But whenever I could go, I went and I enjoyed it. And that's because you started going again, like pre-pandemic. Like I remember you telling me that you're you're found yeah. school and you're going, and then that kind and of came to a screeching came halt. Came to a halt, and it sucked because I I just loved it so much. Because when you're not really that good at something, you can only get better. And um, I I just I really enjoyed it. I I I don't mind going and fucking rolling with guys who are 19 20 years old and just having them kick my ass because you know what it makes me humble it makes me feel good that i'm doing something productive uh apart from jujitsu um i really love muay thai and i was training muay thai too before covid and actually i think i stopped about a month or two before covid broke out because i was never home like i was saying and so i had to just kind of cut off some of the things that I was doing so I could just make sure I was home more for my wife and my kid. But yeah, I, I, I loved going, I loved sparring. I, I, I had a, I had the opportunity to spar against, you know, some MMA fighters uh, at the gym that I was training at. And yeah, you know, I, I would get my ass kicked and you know, I, I would, I would hold my own against a few of them, but it was for me, it wasn't, a, oh, I have, I have something to prove. I just want to go fucking work out. I want to, you know, I, I, I want to, I want to be surrounded by real people. I want to train with real people. People, you know, when I was, this, this is a, this was a quote from a blue belt at a jujitsu class I took one time. And he said, uh, we were just sitting down after a set, after rolling. And he just kind of says out loud, I like being in a room where I know everybody can kill me. And I was like, yeah, it makes you better. I was like, fuck. Yeah. Like, I don't want to be in a room full of people who talk a lot of shit but don't do anything like everybody you at these gyms you go to most of them are quiet guys and if you saw them on the street you have no idea that they'll beat the fuck out of you that that's what i was gonna ask you about is like do you get those people like 
that you can tell it's kind of a dick measuring contest where they're just there to kind of one up you and you're just there, there to train like. yeah there are a few i mean there are a few sometimes and um you know it doesn't bother me any man because i just kind of keep to myself and do my thing some you know a lot of those guys who kind of have that mentality are guys who are kind of new or, or just call, come in for their first class and so um it's kind of funny because so as you're as a beginner you know a little bit more than they do so if they go against them you you, you have the upper hand but um for the most part most guys in those gyms are, are pretty cool everybody just wants to get better because you know you're only as good as your training partners and people want to be around people who people want to be with people they want to tr continue to train with you know what i mean now i'm not an expert by any means in any of these things but um so, I mean, you shouldn't come and ask me questions about this or that because I, I'm not the person to ask. But I, I, I really enjoyed those things. And when COVID broke out, I, I just, I, I, you know, now that gyms are back open, I took, could technically go. But, you know, we're having that second wave right now, and I don't really know how to feel about things. So there's an interesting that, thing that you said earlier, and you said, um, I don't even know what my hobbies are. And you kind of struggle with that. And I find that to be true with a lot of people because I think a lot of people go through their lives and the sad part is some people never discover that hobby or that thing that they're they're good at. Some, In some cases, people, they, they get married and they have kids and that's it. That's their life and that's cool. That's fine, you know. As I said, as long as you're fulfilled, that's fine, but this i i agree yeah, yeah. Uh, this um this pandemic or just this whole year i feel like has been a year of discipline and we have been challenged to discipline ourselves and really find uh search within and find like what are the things that i enjoy and what are what are my hobbies and i feel like at this point we're like what eight months in nine mm -hmm. months in if you have not found that hobby you this has been a total waste because this has been the perfect time you mentioned earlier that it afforded you more time with your family it afforded you more time to do the things that you wanted to do like i in previous years i felt victim of just dedicating myself to work like that was yeah. that was my life you you, you, you were know. burnt out man and, and i i think i even tried telling you like hey chill out bro because there's more to life than what this is i mean i was chasing money yeah to be honest like i've never had money and so i got into like i need to i need to chase money i need to work as much as i can do as much overtime and it got to the point where i i wasn't sleeping like i'd get three four hours of sleep like every day and i'd have you know giant eye bags yeah and i oh and the worst part too i was eating like shit like yeah. i it, it's the point like when you work like 14 15 hour days like the last thing you want to do is go home and cook or eat healthy so I, i'm getting fast food like every night or every other night and it took a toll on my body like i i gained a lot of weight and i was not being active and i felt sick i felt terrible so when i say that you know in june i changed my whole lifestyle it's because of that i was tired of feeling like shit and then at the beginning of the year when when things started shutting down um i actually made it a point to work as much as i could i did a, so much overtime i was working in you know cohort clinics with covid positive patients like i i chased the money so i could save it and have it for emergencies in case you know god forbid i did get sick and i was out of work for a few weeks i knew that i had security but the good thing is that i had so much more time on my hands and instead of like continuing to overwork myself i was like I'm just gonna chill out and let me take advantage of this time let me do all the things that i've wanted to do but i've made excuses i would make excuses like oh no like i'm not gonna work out because i'm too tired or i work like no there's no excuses anymore yeah like time is so valuable now i have 
I have I have plenty of time. And I stop I stop worrying about money because money comes and goes. Like it's it's not everything. I love money. You love money. I love money, man, but at the same time it I'm not that happy. <laughs> it doesn't make you it doesn't make you any more happier. So I was like, you know, I have my health and I have my hobby. So running became my obsession. Mm -hmm. And the only thing with that is like, I have very obsessive personality. So I was going twice a day. And then there are some days I was going three times a day. So I had to really like check myself and be like, okay, you need to chill out. And just because you enjoy this doesn't mean you should overdo it. So like the other thing. And, and you just, I don't mean to interrupt you. No, go ahead. But we hear a lot of this talk about, oh, I don't want to overdo it. I don't want to overtrain. I don't want to. If you feel good enough to fucking do it, go and do it. Mm -hmm. And that's the problem is we, we live in a society now where people are constantly telling you, oh, you shouldn't do that. You sh oh, this is this is too much. This is too much. I First, you got to get to that point where you're that tired and you can't do it and, yeah. you, and you need to take a break. My whole thing was like, if I feel good, I'm going to go fucking do something as far as like something physical. So, I mean, um, and the minute you start telling yourself, oh, I don't want to overdo it. I, I'm not going to go do that. I'm not going to go. Then it gets easier the next time when you're going to do something, you know, some sort of workout. Well, I'm not going to do that. That might be too much. And then it gets to the point where you start taking those days off, like you were saying, you know, you take one day off. then these. Are the so, I mean, when you were telling me you were reading, you were running like two days a week and i was like damn and you're running like several miles both times i mean my whole thing was like i never once like thought to tell you oh dude calm down you know don't want to overdo it in my head i was like rooting for you i was like hey man if you want to do it fucking three times a day go for it as long as you feel good enough to do it and i did have people that would tell me to what were you saying like you shouldn't be doing that and that made me like they don't know like how i'm feeling they don't know like yeah they don't know my routine they don't know anything it's and easy they're so quick to say yeah, like it's easy for people to say oh you shouldn't do that okay what the fuck are you doing yeah uh, in some ways like it's it's a defense mechanism some uh, there's people that don't want to see other people succeed at no. whatever they're doing mm -mm. and so if they can hinder that in some way even subconsciously maybe they don't mean to do it but their personality like dictates that they do that like without even thinking it like because they're so used to it and uh yeah i think people like that are just yeah it's they're trying to hinder any type of success that you might have and and, and those are the people that you need to be able to realize that what they say doesn't matter you're your own person you're in charge of your life I was listening to Joe Rogan's podcast a long one time, and um, sometimes I, I think back and listen to what they were saying. But they were talking about somebody in particular, and they and it was something along the lines of, "If you want to like change your life to some degree, write your own eulogy, and write you know write your own or write your own obituary." I'm sorry. Yeah. And I was like, "Oh fuck!" Like, I don't want mine to be so basic. Yes. Like I want I want people to be look back and be like, man, this guy was this guy was kind of crazy. <laughs> like I I often think about that and actually uh, obituaries kind of uh obituaries kind of make me upset because it makes me upset that you have to condense somebody's entire life to however many words it is. Like that's not enough to sum up a person's life and oftentimes you see it's like, you know, he is survived by his family or whatever, and he was a good father, and he was a good blah 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 blah. And it you never really get to know the person you don't know like what that person did, and yeah, it kind of goes to your point where like you want to know that like you actually and and did don't, something. And don't get me wrong, the things that I do, I don't do for attention. Right. I don't care if people know what I do or not. I don't give a shit. I care about me being happy. I care about me feeling fulfilled. I care about me being the best person I can be for myself, my wife and my kid, and my my friends and my family. And that's good enough for me. I don't need to write I don't need to make I don't need to become a social influencer. 
you know, I'm not there to give workout tips. None of that shit matters to me. Um, but I think we as individuals need to make sure that we're doing the things that we that make us who we are, make us better people, give us a reason to wake up every day and be happy. Because it's very easy to wake up and just feel like a piece of shit every day. I know. I've been there. <laughs> and I don't want to do that anymore. Uh, this is so interesting because like... Um... Uh, I've talked, I've talked about it like to you, like uh, ad nauseum where just like, I took a lot of, this has been like a very transformative period for my life where mm -hmm. I'm just really taking the steps to really evaluate myself. Like what are things that I can improve upon? Like changing my mentality, my lifestyle and uh, physically, but also in my personal life too. And like, am I okay? Am I okay with, the person that i am and if yeah. i can say and before like i don't know if i was i i think this year like i am actually pretty like secure with myself i'm pretty proud of myself like that's the other thing too like it's good to take the time to smell the roses every once in a while which is something that i do not do mm -hmm. but also be proud of yourself it's okay to to i know they say you know you're, you're not supposed to be prideful but be proud of how far that you've come and the choices that you've made and the person that you are. And like, really, um, am I, am I okay with, uh, my philosophy as a person that the, the lifestyle that I lead, like, am I like secure with that? And if you are, then, then that's cool. Like, and mm -hmm. I actually feel like, the both of us have kind of been on the same path. We just arrived at in different ways. The stuff that you're saying is like, because I, dude, I remember like those days, you know, years ago where you're just, you know, you'd sit on your couch and you were just not, I hope you're not offended, but like you, you're just like miserable. Mm -hmm. And I know that because that was me a few years too. And like, you know, I probably didn't like myself as a person. Or maybe I'd be unhappy with it, but yeah. like that's yeah. big change. That's what it know? comes down to, man. I mean, one day, one day last year, I just looked at myself in the mirror. I was like, man, I don't like you. <laughs> I told my, I told my, I was like, I don't like you, dude. Like, who the fuck are you? Like, you're just like, you're an empty vessel. You're like everybody else that's on the internet, just being a shithead. And I was like, wow, you know, and that's, that's the first step of just kind of realizing when you need to change i mean it takes a lot for you to look at yourself in the mirror and tell yourself you don't like what you see and whatever whatever's causing you to feel that way you need to kill it and i'm a, you know i'm a much better person now than i was when i had to tell myself that but i think there's so many people out there who are afraid to make that first step that's the hardest step but once you make it damn it feels a lot it feels really good yeah, like um, a few months ago, um, I was so fixated on just like losing like weight, losing the weight, yeah. the weight that I gained. And you become very impatient because you, you set goals for yourself and, you know, like I need to lose this amount in this amount of time. And when you don't reach that, you're, you, you, that's where it breaks a person because you set these like unrealistic expectations uh, for yourself that you were never going to meet in the first place. And then I was very impatient, but then after a while, I just stopped, I stopped thinking about that. Like it just like, it became a lifestyle change where like, I'm not setting those goals from I need to lose this or whatever. Like I'm just gonna eat better, or I'm gonna eat less, or I'm gonna be more active, or I'm gonna do this, get more sleep, or I'm going to set aside time for me to like I don't know, like meditate, or just like uh, maybe not watch as much TV as I used to, yeah. or or not overwork myself to death. Like yeah. I'm like now I set different goals now. Like if I'm running, I'm just like that's what I like about it, is that I can set like personal goals i'm gonna run five miles this morning or next time i'm gonna run six seven miles or i'm gonna run for 40 minutes straight or something like that like i'm able to challenge myself in different ways and not like you know i need to 
I need to lose weight or I need yeah. to do this. Like, yeah, that's such a vague statement. Yeah, I need to lose weight. I need to do this. You need to be specific and you need to be realistic. The minute you can say that, okay, I'm going to go run for 20 minutes. That's a realistic thing. You mm -hmm. have a set time. You know where the start is and the finish. So you go and do it. If you just say, I'm going to go run, well, what's that? You, you're going to run for 45 seconds and be like, okay, I ran. Is that, or did you get a lot of benefit from that? Probably Are you not. Ch is that challenging is that yourself? Challenging? I mean, if you haven't run in five years, then probably. But, I mean, one thing that I started doing, especially the last couple of weeks, is um, there's a bodybuilder, former bodybuilder named Dorian Yates. And he was very disciplined in his stuff. And he uh, he had a thing where he would write down what his workouts were going to be. And every time he wanted to go and do something, he would write down on a piece of paper. Because that's a contract between himself and his goal. And so now what I'm doing is I'm writing out my workouts, how many sets, how many reps I'm going to do. And I... And before I even stepped foot in my garage to go lift weights, I, I wrote down what I had to do. I have to go do it. That's cool. You're you're manifesting. Yeah. You're you're setting your intentions. You're putting it out, and you hold yourself accountable. Exactly. So I mean, I'm doing all these little things now, and a lot of these tips are also like in Goggins' book, by the way. But I mean, um, I'm doing all of these things because I need to hold myself accountable, because ultimately it's up to me to be a happy person. It's up to me to feel fulfilled and no one else is going to do that for me. You know, this could be like in, was it in game or, or <laughs> infinity war and everybody just kind of half the people in the world disappear. Yeah. All those people I love, you know, if Thanos gets that, all the infinity rings and everybody goes away, well then I just have myself, <laughs> yeah. you know, I know that's kind of a bad comparison, but um, I mean, actually it's, uh, the infinity stones, not the infinity oh, rings. You why? would know this if you were a true, uh, Marvel fan, uh, why, why? like you are, on... you know what I was thinking about? The pure, the purity rings the oh, 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 <laughs> from, from the South the Park. Oh, oh. <laughs> that's what I was thinking about. Uh, it's, it's so funny because we are, I feel like we're speaking the same language just in different dialects <clears throat> like we <coughs> have been on this transformative journey but in private like six they tell you succeed in private like <coughs> nobody else needs to know the things that you're doing and the changes that you're making exactly and, man like this is a conversation that you and i would have in person if you came over to my house yes i i would never tell anybody on instagram any of this stuff because well they don't need to know and i mean if somebody asked me i would be happy to tell them but i mean i'm not going out of my way to tell everybody hey guys this is the journey i'm on come along for the ride i hope you all will enjoy it yeah. and i hope i can inspire you to pick up you know whatever hobby it is you're doing and, and and just get on board with me like no like everybody is fighting their own battles and they're gonna do it on their own lanes yes that's it i and hopefully this has not been Hopefully this doesn't come across as preachy because it's not what we intended, but uh, it's just some food for thought because it's so, we're so quick to, you know, talk about 2020 being a shit year. And well, I agree. Yeah, this it year has been a shit year. This year fucking blows. It's terrible. Honestly, it's been, it may have been the, the most challenging year of my life, but also it's been the most pivotal year of my life because so many things are being set in motion this year. We're laying the foundation for what's going to come next year. And all the, if you put in the work this year, you're going to see, you're going to reap the rewards next year. Hopefully maybe 2022. Yeah. I mean, it, if, yeah. if you haven't do, if you haven't done shit this year, then you're not going to see that return next year. But hopefully, you know, hearing, you know, our personal stories, maybe you can reflect back and really think about it. Like what, what are the positive things that have come out of this year? And if you can name at least one or two, then that's, that's pretty good. I think. Yeah. I mean, honestly, if you're waking up every day and you're happy and you're doing your thing, my hat goes off to you. Keep on keeping on. Yeah. So, but if you're unhappy with something, you haven't done anything that you set out to do. 
do it now. Do it. Go. What are you waiting for? Go. Go. Go fix it. I mean, you, you, no one's going to do it for you. All we have is ourselves. Ourselves. That's it, man. It sucks. You know, one day we're all going to we're going to be gone. Uh, so to quote uh, to quote Vince McMahon, life sucks and then you die. Yeah, that was the most true thing <laughs> he may have ever said. Ever. <laughs> uh, is there anything that you want to end on? Anything you want to say to the people listening to this? Um, you know, thanks for letting me and Larry rant about life. Um, we just wanted to be real and I swear of, we'll be funny next week. We wanted to be real and vulnerable for a bit, I guess, just because we talked so much about the band and music recently that we thought that we would share a little bit about some of the things that we dealt with over the last few months. But, um, I hope that somebody, I hope that y'all got something out of this. And if not, then it's cool. Cause the next episode I'm sure will be funny and entertaining again. Yeah. For those of you bitching that we only talk about our band, this is like a good, uh, change of pace. Yeah. I didn't, honestly, I didn't want to talk about the band. Today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think, uh, I'm, I'm good. I'm for, good. Yeah. For another I'm good. Week. I'm good. So next week we'll talk some more band shit. Yeah. Uh, so if, uh, if there's something that you want to hear us talk about, make sure you let us know, subscribe to all of our social medias. We had some folks reach out to us and ask us some questions or tell us, ask us to tell us things that they wanted us to talk about. So we'll, we'll get to those probably, or try to get to those on the next episode. Oh so, yeah, that, yeah, yeah. That's that's a good idea. So if, um, if you have any more questions, make sure to send them to us, and we will answer them uh, next week. So for Nick and myself, this has been the Fiends Podcast. We'll see you next week. Peace.